Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with ABJ, Apostle Victor James. Now, before we hit the ground running, I got to say this real quick because I know a lot of people now are going to be looking at my, you know, sunglasses. You know, I, I just had um, a bit of treatment on my eyes, so I had to wear it because of the lighting, you know. So I'm so sorry if it's offending anybody. Please forgive me for my sun, for my sunglasses. All right. But down to the truth. There's something in my heart I, I feel by the help of the Holy Spirit I need to bring everybody's attention to. And it is the fact of our new year. This is January. The January of a new year. And usually, this is the period a lot of people are religiously taken up. You know, and controlled and brought into slave act or activities. Of religious things and these religious activities that a lot of people are pushed into forced into condemned into are actually not of God <clears throat> I'll tell you what I mean in a sec because I, I know that right now to some people they've been declared in their churches by their men of God man of God woman of God they've been declared seven days fast for the new year 21 days fast for the, for the new year, uh, 50 days fast for the new year, 100 days fast for the new year. I, I, I wonder where in God's name or in God's word did anybody see that? You know, these are inventions of men. And, and you know, the, one of the first things people will say is that ABJ Apostle Victor James say he doesn't like fasting. Did I say that? I never said so. You know, there's nothing wrong in doing fasting. But if you have to fast for a new year, everything, I'm sorry to say, is wrong with it. There is no way you are asked, demanded, called, asked by God to fast for a new year. You shouldn't do that. It's a religious activity that the people, the men of God, the women of God, that suggests this thing. You know, because they have no scriptural stand for it, and because they know that it's just mere, mere religious activities and an exercise in futility, they play up sentiment. And they say, all these people that are saying grace, grace, grace. Uh, me, I know that uh, we must just do fasting, shall? you know, so for, for, for the year to go away. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Whatever is born of God overcometh the world. That's the scripture. In First John chapter 5, whatsoever is born of God in verse 4, Everything, everyone that is born of God is born and overcome. And before God or unto God, there is no new year. God does not operate in new year. That's why I used to ask myself, people that come to give all kinds of 10 prophecies, 15 prophecies, 70 prophecies, 50 prophecies, 100 prophecies for a new year. That's not God. They are prophesying out of their flesh, out of their mind, out of what they think, desire, want. The new year to be. That's why majority of those prophecies never come to pass. And then some of those prophecies are things that will naturally take place. A man of God said one time that in one year like that that there's going to be massive earthquake in Nigeria. There's nothing like that. Look, I'm not against prophecy. Neither am I against fasting. But what the Scripture says concerning us as believers stands. The Bible said in Colossians, let's start with that. Colossians chapter 2 in verse number 18. NLT translation of Colossians chapter 2 verse 18. Look at what it says. I'm just going to read it here. It said, do not let anyone, do not let, I'm reading Colossians chapter 2 verse 18. NLT translation. Do not let anyone condemn you by insisting on self-denial. Don't let anybody whip you with words whip you with preachings or teachings don't let them con bring condemnation don't let them shake your heart that ah you are following them they're not doing fasting uh, you know for a new year stay there you know look don't let anybody do that to you don't let anybody do that to you galatians chapter 5 says very clearly it is for freedom that you were called you were called to be free you are free a new year does not have the right the power to demand you afflicting yourself or denying yourself anything for the year to fall into line. It's not of God. 
It's not of, as a matter of fact. Come and think of it. People doing 100, 100 days fasting. How many days are in a year? 365 days in a year. Out of those 365 days, you are going to do 100 days fasting. Who will be with you? When will we wake up? When, when exactly are we going to wake up? And, and face reality. What, there is only one thing that is demanded of us. According to the word of God. To live in this New Testament. There is only one thing that is demanded. Woo, only one thing. And the Bible said in 1 John, um, I got to get it out for you real quick. So that it doesn't look as if I'm just speaking my mind. Because uh, that's one of the things I, I hate to do. I hate to just speak uh, things that is not scripturally founded. And I hate to talk and build people on religious practices that never produces anything. Are you seeing that? Because you can do fasting without doing what God actually demands of us. And then the year will still whip the person. The year will still flog the person. Are you seeing what I'm saying? In First John, uh, I think it's in chapter 3. Let me just see. Chapter 3, verse 25. If it's not, I'll, I'll look for the right, the right verse. First John, chapter 3, verse 25. Uh, no, it is not. Let me see. Oh, am I at 25? I'm not at 25 years. You know. All right. First John chapter 3, verse 23. Yeah, verse 23. First John chapter 3, verse 23. This is what God come, God, God wants. This is what God wants from us. The Bible said, He said, and this is his commandment. John is referring to the commandment that the Father gave us in Christ Jesus as believers, as children of God. And this is his commandment. What is his commandment? That we should believe. You see, eh, let me tell you. We are called believers. That is who we are in Christ Jesus. Believers. And God's command for you and I, whether it's for a new year, whether it's for marriage, whether it's for children, whether it's for breakthrough, whether it's for finance, whether it's for job, whether it's for success, peace of mind, whether it's for uh, good health, whatever it is for, God's demand, God's commandment is that we should believe in the name of Jesus. Believe. You see, believing is more difficult than fasting. Because fasting only excites works of the flesh. That's all he does. Fasting does not... That's why the devil is never afraid of you fasting. I'm telling you. The devil is not afraid that anybody is doing fasting. Otherwise, why is it that men of God, after they do 100 day fasting, you know, bad things still happen to them. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that it is good, but I'm just you know trying to explain something. You know, they still get disappointed, they still feel pressured. That's to tell you that fasting is not the key. Because when you are faced with diverse trials, James says you should know that it is the trying of your faith. It is the trying of your faith. So God said, What I want you to do is to believe. It's a commandment. It is not whether we feel like it. So people are fasting in the absence of believing. Look, when you become a believer, you will not need fasting for anything to work. For all things are possible to him that believeth. Glory be to God. For signs follow them that believe. Signs follow them that believe. Signs follow them that believe. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Because it is an ungodly practice for a man. Let, let me tell you this. How many people eat three square meals a day in Nigeria? How many people? Apart from three square meals, how many people eat nutritional three square meals a day? You see, these men of God, this you know, powerful men of God or women of God that put people on fasting seven days, 21 days, uh, 50 days fasting because we're in January, a new year has started. Most of these men, you need to go and see when they are eating at home, when they are taking dinner. Their table is heavily set. They have all different courses. They have rice, they have beans, 
they have spinach, they have vegetable, they have green beans, they have green pepper, they have, you know, well garnished, well arranged food. But you, what are you eating? Rice in the morning, yam in the afternoon, a bath at night, all is carbohydrate. And you are still doing fasting. Who bewitched you? What, what, what exactly is going on? Look, most of these men of God, I'm telling you, I know about it. Most of these men of God, they don't eat anyhow. Nutritionists are the people that prescribe what they eat for them. So when they say they are doing 100 days fasting, they are eating under the instructions of a nutritionist. I'm telling you, walk me anywhere. You see, but they won't tell you. Look, there are three men of God in this country that pastor the three biggest churches in Nigeria. There are three biggest churches, largest churches in Nigeria. You know, two of these men, with all respect, all due respect, did operation last year in America, abroad. They did operation last year, but they will never let you know. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Nobody knew except those of us that are in a carcass. Look, let me tell you if you do not know what is going on and you allow yourself to be taken as you know a religious slave, you will pay the price for it. Whatever sacrifice it will demand that will be needed for a new year, for any year. For any year to fall in line for you and I, Jesus has given that sacrifice. He has given himself as that sacrifice. He has paid that sacrifice. And Jesus did not just give himself as that sacrifice or as the sacrifice for whether it's a year, whether it's for 10 years, whether it's for uh, our family, our peace, our uh, wrong, our sin, whatever it is. Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice according to the Father's plan. As the Father planned it. That's what the Bible says. As the Father planned it. Let me read it to you. I got to read it to you. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, God punished the devil. See Bible. Amanande. Abagadaya. See Bible. I, I know that a lot of these religious uh, uh, you know, people will be so offended that I, you know, I angry with me right now. But it doesn't matter. Somebody has to say, teach the truth. You don't need fasting, not even one day fast for a new year. You don't need it. You don't need it. The commandment is clear. You should believe in the name of Jesus. You should believe. Look, when you get to a point where Jesus becomes so real to you, your confidence in Jesus woo, will be so strong and solid that even the devil will acknowledge it. He will flee. He said, whom will resist steadfast in the faith. You don't use fasting to resist the devil. It is faith, steadfast faith. Continuous, consistent, or breaking faith in the face of challenges that the devil runs from. Are you seeing what I'm saying? This is very important. You, you know, let me show you. Galatians chapter 1, in verse 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at what it says. Let me even read it in NLT translation. Because uh, let me bring out the juice for you. <laughs> let me bring out the juice. Glory be to God. Because I know that a lot of manipulations are going on right now. A lot of manipulations are going on. Oh, you have to give, you know, X, Y, Z. I'm still going to get to that part. You have to give X, Y, Z in order for this, uh, this year to be good for you and your children. Those are lies. Jesus has given himself. He was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace has been laid upon him. And with his stripes we are secured concerning healing. So whatever this year will demand from you and I, Jesus was offered, as a matter of fact, he gave himself as the offering to free us from those demands that any year can require of us. Hallelujah. You see, most of these men that wants to religiously put people under control, under bondage, and control their lives so that they will always keep looking to them. They will never teach you about what Jesus has done for us. They will always teach you about what you need to do. What you have not done. There is something you have not done. That's why your miracle has not taken place. Hogwash. That's a lie from the pit of hell. 
It's not of God. It's not of God. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3 says in the NLT translation, we rely on what Jesus Christ has done for us. I'm going to say it again. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, NLT translation, he said we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. Are you getting this thing? Glory be to God. Now watch this. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, I said I was going to read it to you in NLT translation. Where's verse 4 now? Verse 4 says, Jesus died for our sins. Bam. Watch you. Just as God our Father planned. Woo! So Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice for whether our wrongs, our new year, our marriage, our children, our miracle. Jesus offered himself according to God's plan. So Jesus didn't just come to die for us. He just woke up one morning and said, I'm going to die for everybody. I'm going to die for the sin of the world. Or because the Bible said in John chapter uh, uh, 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God just woke up one morning and said, I love you all. I'm going to give my only begotten son to die for you. No. The Bible said God planned it. Before salvation was ever executed. Before the father told Jesus about it. The father planned salvation. He thoroughly planned it. That's why Ephesians 1 said it is according to his own counsel. Aya. Woo! And God does not look for wisdom. You know why? He's wisdom himself. The Bible calls him the only wise God. So in planning salvation, he thought about everything that needs to be thought about. And infuse it into the plan of salvation. So that when salvation, the sacrifice for salvation is paid, it will be all encompassing. It will cover everything. Whether it is New Year or not. It's As a matter of fact, the psalmist talked about it in Psalm 103. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Not some of his benefits. All his benefits. All his benefits. So salvation is a benefit in all areas. All things. Glory be to God. Hey, Jesus. Salvation came with a benefit for you in all things. That's why when you begin to celebrate Jesus, acknowledging him as your Lord and Savior, relying on true knowledge, relying on what God the Father used him to do for us, one of the first things that happens to you is that the devil will leave you in the area of of pressurizing you you will come straight into rest oh yeah you know everybody who sits down and listen to my teaching the first thing that happens to them is rest you call it's, it's automatic jesus said come to me all you that labor and a heavy lady he said i will give you rest he didn't say i will give you more work no he didn't say that Look at the kind of pressure going on in Nigeria. People can't eat. They're not eating well. You not gather them again, all the same poor people, and give them more punishment that they need to do fasting so, so that their heavens can open. That's the lie of the devil. Don't let anybody preach the book of Daniel to you. Because that's one of the things they will use to get you. Oh, you know, Daniel, he, he fasted and prayed for 21 days. And then as the angel was bringing the answer, you know, the prince of Persia. That means the prince of the demon responsible for Iraq. You know, we stood that angel and they fought, 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 fought. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me bust your bubble. We, when we pray, we don't wait for an angel to come from heaven. We are not Daniel's mate. We are members of the body of Christ. God punish the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? We resurrected with Christ, in Christ. When we resurrected, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and wicked spirit in heavenly places. They watched us resurrect with Jesus. They couldn't stop us. And we ascended. And the Bible said we ascended above all the heavens with Christ, that Jesus may feel all things. Aya! See ghost pimples in my body. Ha <laughs> ha! He said, what is it? That he that descended is the same that first of all ascended. I mean, he that ascended is the same that first of all descended into the lower parts. So whether it is marine spirit or banjo, uh, uh, uncle water, papi water, auntie water, witches and wizards, whatever they are, Jesus descended 
And as he descended, we descended with him. As first of all, we died with him on the cross of Calvary. So we descended into the lower parts of the of the earth with him. We went to hell with him. Glory be to God. We were in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights with him. Three days later, glory, glory be to God. We busted out of the grave with him. We rose. Woo! That's why whatever is born of God, whoever believes in Jesus is born of God. And whatever is born of God is an overcomer. Are you getting me? Now, if you notice, I am not talking motivationally, even though it may sound like I'm trying to motivate you. No, no, no. It's not motivational speech. This is scripture. This is the gospel. This is the New Testament. This is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm telling you. He paid the price. God the Father sat down and taught. He taught it true. That's why God did not get any angel involved in the plan of salvation. They were looking and trying to find out what is this salvation about. God didn't tell them. Because God sat down and thought about it. After thinking of every possibility, whatever it will take, anything it will require, God factored it into it. And then called his son Jesus. And said, you will be the one to execute this my plan. So you see, Jesus didn't just come to die for us. He came to die or to offer himself as a sacrifice for whatever it is that our lives will require both now and through eternity according to the plan of God the Father. Don't just take my word. Read it to yourself. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Unfortunately, a lot of people have not seen that, that verse before. A lot of men of God have not seen it before. Now, another thing that takes place is that this period, this because it's January of a new year, is that a lot of ministers, because they need money, they are going to be pushing the idea of first fruit, first things. And they will preach firstborn. Just tell the people you need money. You see, when I need money for something, maybe I need money for myself or for my family or for a project, I just come to tell my people, look, I need money. And I need everybody to help me with X, Y, Z amount. Why don't come under the pretense of firstborn? Because you know that you are going to collect and clear everybody's salary in January. Look, the punishment and the suffering in January is enough. Don't let everybody collect your January salary. It is not of God. You are just wasting your time. You are just wasting your money. All the January salary you have given. Are you not the, at the same place? How are you better than those of us who have not given our first, our January salary? They call it your first thing. And that you should redeem your firstborn. Lies of the devil. Lies from the pit of hell. These men just want money. They just want money. That's all they want. It's just money. It's just about money. Take money out of it. They will not preach firstborn again. They will not preach first things again. They will not preach redeeming your firstborn. Now, let me tell you this. Anybody who comes to preach, you need to redeem your firstborn to you. That man, I don't care how great he is, I don't care how big he is, I don't care what he does, I don't care where he comes from, I don't care who he is, you should know that he is not speaking by God. The man is not speaking by God. He's, he's just talking by himself. I'm telling you. He's talking by himself. You know why? Peter, the same thing happened in the time of the apostles. You know, Peter had to write to the church. In the book of 1 Peter, he had to write to them. He said, you should know. By now, I want you to know that you were not redeemed with silver and gold and such perishable things. Your redemption is not by silver or gold. That means in our modern day English, your redemption is not by money. You can't give money to be redeemed. It's not possible. You can't. That's what Peter, the book of Peter said. He said, but you are redeemed by the prayer or with the precious blood of Jesus. So if anybody is preaching firstborn to you, first things or first, uh, first fruit, tell them to collect the blood of Jesus. You will see that they will tell you they don't want. What they want is money. Are you seeing that? Now, another one again, I got to talk about 
See, I'm, so, I'm really sweating. Another one I, I got to talk about again is covenant. Covenant. <laughs> I heard a man of God say, the reason things are working for him is because of his covenant with God. He has a covenant with God and he's keeping his covenant with God. You see, when a, a man of God wants to, you know, I want to use a very mild word. You know, when, when he wants to uh, glorify his own flesh, the things he's saying or he says will just be pointing to him. He, there is nothing he says that will be pointing to Jesus. So you see, his flesh is taking glory before God. And the Holy Spirit said through Paul in First Corinthians chapter 1, he said that no flesh will be able to glory before God. No flesh. God will not allow it. God will not allow it. Never. It will never be allowed. You see, because God will not take anybody glorifying their flesh and say it is because of what he or she did. That's why God is blessing. That's why things are happening. Those are lies. Those are lies. Because that's a way to rubbish Jesus. That's a way to nullify the things that, or, 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 the things that Jesus has done for us. Watch this. A man of God said he's working in so much power that when he even pray for people that have HIV, they are healed. You know why? Because he knows his covenant with God. He's keeping his covenant with God. Look, these guys, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to use a very harsh word. I used to ask myself, are these people servants of God? Are they really born again? Do they really know Jesus? Because I don't get it. You see, in the New Testament... Uh, uh, okay, before I even say that, this man of God is preaching, and I saw it on TikTok. He said, um, he said, do you know there is nowhere? The Bible calls God a promise-keeping God. But what God, what the Bible calls God is that God is a covenant Keeping God. I laugh. You know why I laugh? You know? Ignorance. You know? Ignorance is a terrible thing. Especially scriptural ignorance. It's a very terrible thing. It can make a man dance naked publicly. You know, this is a man of God disgracing himself publicly. He's referring to the books of Moses. In the Old Testament, that God keeps coming out to a thousand generation. That's when God was talking to Israel. That is not for the new creation in Christ Jesus. You see, eh, the new creation in Christ Jesus have no covenant with God, and God will never come into a covenant with anybody. I don't care whether it's a bishop or a G.O. or a pastor or an apostle or a prophet. God will never enter into a covenant with any man. Never. Anybody who says that is lying. The person is lying by the devil. The person is not speaking the truth. It is not the truth of the word of God. Even Abraham. Okay, the Bible calls us the children of Abraham. That's what he said in Galatians chapter 3. He said, if you be Christ, then you are... Uh, uh, you are Abraham's seed. That means if you belong to Christ, you are a child of Abraham. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So let's refer to Abraham. Even when God wanted to make covenant with Abraham, because God cannot make, you can't keep covenant with God. He can't make covenant with you. Who are you? Man. Flesh and blood. That cannot even keep the law. Which man can keep the law? Majority of the testimony these bishops, these geos, these pastors, these apostles give, their testimonies are lies. Exaggerated testimonies. No talk of keeping covenant. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look, when God came to tell Abraham, because that's what they used to say, God made covenant with Abraham. God did not enter into covenant with Abraham. No. He was just using Abraham to, as a type and shadow of what he did. What he, the covenant he entered with, with Jesus. Okay. Let's even take that. God entered covenant with Abraham. Let, let's, let's think of it. Let's even take that just for um, argument's sake. Right? For clarification's sake. 
When God came to Abraham, he said, I'm going to enter into a covenant with you. He told Abraham to take PG, you know, animal, slice into two, and pour blood in between. You know, so one side of the PG, one side of the animal here, and on that side here. God said, I will pass from this side to you. Abraham, you will pass from that side to me. So we can enter into a covenant. Are you seeing that? God wanted to enter into a covenant. When it was time for the covenant, Abraham, all through the night, I mean, all through the day, God, the animal, cut it, did exactly what God said, put one on one side, and another one on one side, so that God will pass through, and Abraham too will pass through. When it was time for that covenant to be entered into, the Bible said God caused a deep sleep. You know the kind of sleep that people sleep when they are about to go for surgery, operation, that they will inject them with what is known of that thing itself. Um, anesthetics that you will sleep off, that will numb you. God caused a deep sleep to fall on Abraham. That kind of sleep, God has never caused it to fall on anybody before. Except Adam in the Garden of Eden, when he was going to bring out Eve from Adam. The same deep sleep fell on Adam. It was that same kind of deep sleep that fell on Abraham. So God walked through those sacrifices and made that covenant. So the next day in the morning, Abraham woke up and said, God, oh, sorry, I slept off. Let's do the covenant. God said, no, I've done it already. So you tell me, how did God enter into covenant with Abraham? No way. He just used Abraham as a prototype, as a human type for the real person he was entering covenant with. So who did God enter that covenant with? When Abraham slept off, when Paul came by the Holy Spirit in the book of Galatians chapter 3 into chapter 4, Paul, Holy Spirit now said, he said, God entered that covenant with Jesus Christ. So when Abraham fell into that deep sleep, as God the Father went through that sacrifice, Jesus on the other side went through the sacrifice. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So the person God is in covenant with is Jesus. Jesus is the only person God is in covenant with. Now, those of us who accept who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are the product of the covenant relationship between Jesus and the Father. It's like it's like my marriage, me and my wife. I entered into a marriage covenant with my wife. Yeah? We went to court, we did the registry, you know, went to church, did the church wedding, did the traditional whatever, you know. So I entered into a marriage covenant with my wife. But by the grace of God, my wife and I have two children, male and female. My children have no covenant with me. They are the result, the product, of the covenant that me and my wife has with ourselves. Are you seeing that? So there is no way my son or my daughter will have to do X, Y, Z before I can do X, Y, Z. They went to school. I paid, me, my wife and I paid their school fees without them doing anything for us. My children schooled abroad. abroad. I use you what I'm saying. They went to primary school abroad, went to secondary school abroad, went to university abroad until we brought them back to Nigeria to come and redo it again. They didn't do anything to qualify for us to pay their tuition fee. Nothing. As a matter of fact, when we were bringing them back to Nigeria, they did not do anything to qualify for us to buy them ticket to come back to Nigeria. Just because they are our children, the result of our union, of our covenant, they became heirs of everything we have. They have right to everything we have. That's what. That's who you are. God will never demand a covenant from you. God will never ask you to enter into a covenant or into a sacrifice agreement with him. Never. Never. He will never play down on the sacrifice or the covenant of Jesus. God will never play it down. The covenant and the sacrifice of Jesus is enough. And I'm going to show, I'm going, I'm going to read it to you. In Hebrews chapter 10, glory be to God, as I begin to round up, in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, look at what the Bible said here, glory be to God, 
Hebrews 10, I said I didn't want to preach for too long. You know, so I'm going to cut it short in righteousness here. Hebrews 10, um, from, let me take from verse, uh, woo, thank you, Lord Jesus. From verse 12. He says in verse 12, but this man, referring to Jesus, but this Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever. So the sacrifice Jesus offered, the covenant sacrifice of Jesus' offering on our behalf unto God is forever. It will, it will never come to expire. That's why it doesn't have expiry date. And there is no devil that can change his benefit for us. No devil. No power in hell. Glory be to God. No power in hell. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> Are you seeing that? So what God wants is for you to live your life by faith, depending on the sacrifice, what Jesus Christ has done for us. That's what God demands of everybody. Apart from that, God is not interested. That's why you see that all the religious practices, Christianity, they've been doing for years, over the years in the past. And Jesus just keep going down and down and down. Because they're all religious activities. You wonder, with all the prayers going on in this nation, with all the fasting, with all the things, Nigeria just keep plunging in more and more into bad situations. It's because we have refused to follow God's command or commandment, which is to primarily believe. And look at how we believe. Woo! Maybe I'm going to end with this. I'm going to close with this. Go with the God in heaven. <laughs> you see, look, do you think I don't need money? You think I don't want money myself? I want money now. I need money. All I have to do is to deceive you that this is January. You need to give your first fruit so that you can give me your January salary. We know about these things now. We can do them now. Paul said we, are, we just decided to denounce the hidden things of darkness. We can't do all this manipulation also. We just, we just decided that, look, these hidden things of darkness, this why you to, to use the idea to collect them. We, we don't want to do it. We, our conscience, we have decided our conscience will become pure before God and before men. I see what I'm saying. Let me just say one last scripture and I, I get out of this joint. In, uh, um, in NLT translation of Romans chapter 3, verse 25. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Romans 3, 25. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, precious Father. Watch this. Romans 3, verse 25. Uh, the Bible said, we are made right in God's sight. We are made right in God's sight. When we trust in Jesus Christ to take away our sins. Watch it. And, and we are all... No, no, sorry. That's not 25. 25. <laughs> That's why you see that way in this shape because you know, like, like I told you, my eyes it, it, it's blessed. I just uh, gave it medical attention, so it's still recovering. All right, I see verse 25. Romans chapter 3, verse 25, NLT translation. It says, For God sent Jesus to take away, um, for God sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to satisfy God's anger against us. Yeah, watch it. He said, We are made right with God when we believe that Jesus shed his blood, satisfying, I mean, sacrificing his life for our sins. So we are made right with God. We are made, we are made sure that this year will work for us. How are we sure that this year will work for us? How are we sure that without fasting, this year will work for us? How are we sure without giving first fruit, this year will work for us? How are we sure that without uh, uh, doing any extra of this thing, this year will work for us? He said, by believing that Jesus sacrificed himself for us. Simple. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't let anybody lie to you. Don't stop being babes. Don't to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Stop being babes. Grow. Grow up. Use this year to grow. Determine. I refuse to do fasting for this year. I will not do fasting for this year. This year will serve me. And see, by the end of December this year, you will come and thank me for it. You would have gained a major victory. You would have 
freed yourself from religious bondage as a practice. Activities that holds no water. Are you seeing that? Very important. The Lord loves you. God, the Father, loves you too much to take you through anything and then to rubbish what Jesus has done. Finally, let me say this to you. I saw that there are a lot of all kinds of demonic things going on now. There are some people that call themselves prophetess, prophets, are doing on social media. You know, they are telling people these days to um, some of, some people. They are telling them. I, I saw one one that says he's a prophet or a prophet. He said, um, uh, "If you want this year to work well for you in the name of Jesus." He said, don't just say in the name of Jesus. Don't just say, ah, ah, Jesus, Jesus. No, 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 don't just do that. He said, what you do is that go and get uh, 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 cola knot. Dry cola knot. Open the middle of that cola knot. And say, into the cola knot. I said, this is an abalist. This one is not a prophet or prophetess of God. This person is a messenger of Satan. This person does not have regard for the sacrifice of Jesus. This is a messenger of Satan disguising to look like an angel of God. Another one said, carry calabash. Once it's 12 midnight, break it. Boah, put in water inside, break it, and then use the water. As you break it, touch it, use it to clean yourself. And say, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I clean myself from accident this year. I clean myself from sorrow. And come and see baby Christians. Foolish people that have been bewitched. Saying, Amen. 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 That's why Jesus has not yet come. Because if Jesus comes today, a lot of people will not make it. Stop being babes. And stop burning incense. There's a woman that says she's a prophetess. Telling people to burn incense. That woman is not of God. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you up front. That woman is satanic, demonic, a messenger of Satan. And I'm saying it, I want everybody to hear it. If you have seen that video on TikTok, that woman is demonic, leading people away from Jesus Christ. God does not want any burning of incense. Jesus is our incense that has been offered unto God. Hallelujah. Anything that turns you away from Jesus is not of God. I thank God for you and I bless God. And I know that the Lord will bless you, keep you. And then this year, you are going to succeed. In the name of Jesus. I bless you in Jesus' name. The Bible said in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, whatever you do this year, he said, do all, whether by action or words, in the name of Jesus. If you wake up this year, at any time, wake up in Jesus' name. If you want to sleep, sleep in Jesus' name. If you want to go for your business, go in Jesus' name. If you want to talk to anybody, talk to them in Jesus' name. If you want to ask God for anything, ask in Jesus' name. Don't add anything to it. Faith in Jesus is what God requires. And God will do it for you. Peter said, this man at the gate, of, the gate called Beautiful. He said, this man, faith in Jesus has made him whole. Healed him. Faith in Jesus. No color not. No burning of incense. No taking uh, ashes. No doing anything. I bless you. And I declare that the Lord restores your soul. That this year, the lines are falling onto you in pleasant places. Goodly heritage is yours. No weapon of the enemy shot against you will touch you or, or, or penetrate you. I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both you, your family, your job, your business, your loved ones, your ministry, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you until I see you on the next broadcast. This is ABJ, Apostle Victor James. Guess what I'm about to do? I am signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.